commencing mature intellectual discussion on the lifting potential of human flatulence in three, two, <laughs> Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, the only show that can talk for eight minutes about the real-life physics of a virtual fart, and then follow it up in the next episode with a dissertation on quantum mechanics, cause, you know, that's how we roll. Now, farting as a power in video games is nothing new. Mortal Kombat's Bo Rai Cho, Abe from Oddworld, Agumon from Tekken, but no butt bugle has ever been quite as powerful as the Wario Waft in Super Smash Pewdiepie. Pie fans brawl. You did it, bros. You bros. Thank you, bros. You bros really a million bros. Activating in three frames, lasting a second, and dealing over 40% damage at full charge, it may not be silent, but it certainly is deadly. And look at that height! So my twisted mind of Dr. Brain asked, what would it take if I too wanted to become a human butt rocket? What sort of force is leaving Wario's <clears throat> nozzle when he uses this move. Is the secret to a real-life double jump just eating a bunch of beans? Let's find out. First, why does Wario have such a gas problem? Well, the wind for blowing these butt trumpets come from two primary sources, swallowed air and the byproducts of intestinal bacteria. When food passes through the small intestine and doesn't get digested, these bacteria get their turn at it. Their feasting results in large amounts of hydrogen and methane gas which builds until being released via flautus. Now, Nintendo has repeatedly shown that Wario's favorite food is garlic, that he eats it in whole cloves. Garlic contains a high amount of starch, which is more difficult for the human body to digest. Thus, more of it makes it to the bacteria at the end of the line, resulting in more fart fuel. So Wario's fictional diet is the real-world reason that his rectal revolver is constantly locked and loaded. So in order to find out how much force is behind one of Wario's bunghole buzzers, this is the equation we need to solve. It's pretty intense. I mean, this is quite literally rocket science. Best place to start is by breaking it down. M is the mass of Wario, G is the acceleration of gravity, V is the velocity of the rocket, Y is the height the rocket reaches, K is the number representing all of the wind resistance forces, and T is the number we're looking to solve, the motor thrust in Newton. Let's knock a few easy ones out first. Acceleration due to gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared. That's just gravity on Earth. Another easy one to fill in, the mass of Wario. Official Nintendo sources list Wario weighing in at 308 pounds, or about 140 kilograms. But now's when they start to get hard. Let's do height next. The Wario waft has varying strength dependent on how long it's had to charge. For maximum height, you have to wait about a minute 50 seconds. So, besides clenching, what's a Wario to do? But to work that booty! Twerking my way downtown, twerking fast, days is past and I'm hood bound. No, bitch. Having sufficiently twerked all up on Captain Falcon, we're cleared to launch. But stop right there. We can't know how far Wario's traveling without a sense of scale. In other words, we need to know Wario's height so we can compare it against the distance he flies. But in all of my research, I couldn't find a single source saying exactly how tall our spherical-shaped friend is, so I had to dig a little deeper. In my most controversial episode, no, not Final Fantasy is anti-religion. More hot button than Pokemon being anti-creationist. The one where I find Sonic's true speed. I lay the groundwork to determine that Super Mario is practically 9 feet, or 2.75 meters. Using height charts and pixel measurements, I was able to find that, by comparison, Wario is practically 10 feet tall, or, for the metrically minded, just over 3 meters. With this, we can scale the Super Smash Bros. world. Wario, in these pictures, stands at 300 pixels. The boxes at about 5. 
500. The Wario Waft sends him up 7 boxes, 3,500 pixels, 116 feet, or 35.35 meters. And that, dear theorists, is Y1. Now, knowing how far he travels, we can calculate the velocity, which is distance traveled over time. The time is 1 second, so V is 35.35 meters per second. Easy. Leaving us with K. Wind resistance. And out of all of them, it's the most complicated number to find. It factors in air density, drag, and the cross-sectional area of your rocket. Just take my word that Wario's K ended up at 9.33. But for now, I'm eager to get to this math problem. Cue exciting music! Wow, it really doesn't matter what music I put under this. It is still boring. Drumroll, please. At the moment of flatulence, the force squeezing its way through Wario's cheeks is an astounding 13,138 newtons. What, are, are you not impressed? Oh, I get it. You have no idea what that actually means. Yeah, me neither. Figless Newtons always confused me. Well, one Newton is approximately the force that a McDonald's quarter pounder exerts on your hands as you lift it to your mouth. 35 Newtons will break an egg, and 4,000 Newtons is a general estimation of the force required to break your femur. In short, the force released all at once during the Wario Waft would be enough to rip him in half, back door first. Kind of like popping a balloon. It is worth comparing the Wario launch to that of a real rocket, though. At 13,000 newtons, Wario's anal ascent comes nowhere close to a real rocket, whose total launch force is nearly 10.5 million newtons. But that number's a little misleading. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. And because he's so much less massive than a rocket, Wario's acceleration at about 93 meters per second squared is actually 18 times faster than a NASA-approved rocket. Houston, we have a Wario. Okay, so while that's all well and good for Wario, it doesn't answer the question on all of our minds. Can my farts in real life propel me forward? And the answer is yes, if you're in space. The average fart is three hundredths of a gram and exits the butt at about three meters per second. As we've seen with Wario, on Earth there are too many forces to contend with for this to do anything, wind resistance, gravity, etc. But in the vacuum of space, if you're floating around bare-butted, mooning the moon, a typical fart would give a 240-pound human enough momentum to carry him about 8.8 .8 centimeters per day. And since this is space we're talking about, with nothing to slow you down, each fart would add to that speed. Considering the average human passes gas 14 times per day, by the end of day one, you'll have farted a pint and increased your velocity to over 1.2 meters per day. Collectively, at the end of your first year of farting, you would be traveling 18 meters per hour, or 0.01 miles per hour, just from fart power alone. So yes, Virginia, there is propulsive power in your past gas, which leaves us with only one question left unanswered. Why burp and taste it when you can fart and propel yourself forward through the vacuum of space? But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. If you thought this episode stunk, well thank you, I quite agree. Now, back to the Super Amazing End Card Tournament. I started two episodes ago. This time it's a good old console war. SNES versus Genesis. Nintendo versus Nintendo. Don't. Click on one of the two to cast your vote, and next time I'll let you know the winner. And while you're clicking, be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. I'm only 8,061,000 subs behind PewDiePie's bro team. So close! Ah, maybe if I had a foreign accent. Hello, bros. Welcome to g- No, it would never work.